It's important to know that this is a relatively common phenomenon. It's not in their heads. Um, and I think sometimes just understanding that they're not alone, that other people have experienced these same symptoms can be reassuring and can alleviate some of the anxiety. When it was actually in the 1980s when we were finding that in support groups, a lot of cancer survivors were talking about, you know, I'm having trouble with my memory, I'm having trouble concentrating. And then it, people started sharing their experiences and then we started to realize that really this, this is something that we need to pay attention to. And it wasn't until probably the mid to late 1990s when the scientific community uh, came to understand that this is something that really needs to be studied. So uh, coping strategies, again, um, being patient with yourself, allowing yourself the extra time that it takes to complete multiple different tasks, um, understanding that after going through therapy, you're not going to bounce back immediately. And that can be a little bit frustrating because you think you're done with your surgery, your chemotherapy, your radiation. I should be back to normal. But that was months of intense interventions, intense things that were happening in the body. It's going to take the body a long time to recuperate. So being patient and understanding that this is a process, it can be a somewhat prolonged process to recovery. Staying active, exercising, we know is good for uh, mental uh, cognitive abilities as well as for general health and energy that can combat fatigue. Um, maintaining a good social support network as well. Interacting with other people we found can also keep the mind much more alert. Reducing stress as much as possible, although it's, it's not easy in this day and age, but cognitive behavioral therapy, yoga, relaxation techniques, there's a lot of research looking at those interventions and those can potentially be quite helpful.